I went to uh, NYU, New York University, uh, for to study music composition. While I was there, I got very distracted by a, a virtually unused back room that had a Buchla modular in it, which was, I think, one of Morton's Botnik's. I got so into it, I ended up taking my student loan for the next semester and bought a, a synthesizer with it. Uh, and that kind of set off my career as a synthesist. Yeah, this is a, this is a Pro One. I bought this um, at a place called Rogue Music in New York. It was quite a while ago, but the way you used to buy gear back then was you'd look at it for an ad in the Village Voice. There was no Craigslist or anything. And uh, that week, the ad for Rogue Music said, amongst a bunch of other crap, Pro One, $50. So I ran over there and I uh, bought this for 50 bucks. And they were like, oh man, that was a mistake. But it was too late by then, I had it. This is um, an Oberheim 2 voice. I, I also love their logo. It is the greatest logo ever. Uh, super fat sounding. This belonged to one of the other members of Easter Island who I'm still really good friends with and he asked me every week if he could buy it back. So, and the answer is unfortunately no at this time. <laughs> I love the score that Johnny Greenwood did for There Will Be Blood. But it took me forever to figure out what was going on in there before I realized he was using the Owens Martin No, And then I thought, man, I need to do that. I want to start doubling conventional orchestral instruments with uh, the Theravox because it, it, it just takes it to a place that you can't really identify what's happening. You're like, well, that's a flute, but there's something else going on, or that's a trumpet and something else is happening with it. And it, it makes this really cool blend of, 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 uh, of textures. That's what I've been trying to do lately. Because it still has this humanistic feel because of the, 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 in, the, the inconsistencies in the pitch that's just a fact of human nature, you know, that makes it uh, blend with acoustic instruments in a, in a, in a cool way. Because if you have a real guy playing something, I mean, a, you know, fiddle player or whatever, and you're trying to double it, there'll be, there'll be like little pitch dramas, little tiny pitch dramas that make everything kind of interesting and undefinable. Okay, I got this and a lot of my other <laughs> instruments at a place in New York that was called Carol Music. And it was this uh, like four-story building in, in Midtown Manhattan that was just filled with every instrument you could think of, tons of crap. And every year they used to have these giant sales. And uh, I went there one year and I bought that chimbalum, uh, a couple of auto harps, uh, what else did I buy? A uh, hammered dulcimer, that hammered dulcimer, this thing, I don't know, a bunch of stuff, and my bill was like $150. And it was like the, one of the best days of my life. It's, 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 it's super funky. I call this like the Tom Waits machine because that's what it does. It's like, it's like half broken all the time. Uh, but it does some really weird shit, which always makes me, I always forget how to do until I start playing with it. That. I love that. If you play like a melody and you start screwing around with the tempos and stuff, it's fun. And if you just use it for like, I use it for, um, you know, accompaniment for comedy. It just sounds funny. I don't know how to explain it. It just was funny sounding. Uh, so I love that thing. This was, a long, this was $75. This was the best $75 I ever spent. It's called a Bowed Sultry. It's totally out of tune. The guys are really badass, put it on a stand, and they play with two bows, like this, which I can't do right now, but that's, that's how that works. Enjoy. One in each hand? Yeah, they do, like that. for laughs.